Hey everyone, this is George Kroos, another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Glad you could join me today. And it is summer right now for many of us um, in North America, getting to enjoy some time to, you know, be present, be with our families, and and take some time to relax, uh, rejuvenate. I know it's been a very hard year, so I hope that um, people listening to this right now are getting that time. And I know that although we have this time and there's this notion that educators, you know, have these summers off. First of all, many educators right now, for example, you just listening to this is proof that people are taking their time to learn and grow, which we all do uh, during this time. But also I think it's, it's really necessary to understand that that time is necessary. There is so much uh, emotional um, expenditure that we have during uh, the year and this year like no other has been emotionally taxing and so to really be effective in the work you need that time to recuperate you need that time to recover right it's it's kind of like saying well nba players get you know four months off well if they don't take that time off they get burned out their bodies break down and it's the same thing with educators you need that time to recuperate and kind of get back. And I I think for me, one of the things that I'm really trying to do right now is the idea of trying not just to be home, but to be present. And when I say being present, I think we get those terms mixed up is not only being present around those people that I'm closest to, but also being present in the moment and during this time. And I think too often we, and I know a lot of people are doing this education right now, they're really concerned you know, understandably so about next year and about the next school year and what's going to look like when we come back. And although we got to think about that stuff, it is really important to be present in the moment um, at, at, at the time we are and to enjoy some of these things because too often we focus on things that are out of our control. Too often we focus on things that we can't do anything about right now. And it actually hurts the present moment and doesn't necessarily make anything better in the future. So really kind of focusing on the idea of being present is something that's really important to me right now and something that uh, I've been thinking about. And one of the reasons that I've taken a little bit of a break, I haven't been posting regularly and I have been for probably 10 years and I, I felt like I just needed a break and the ability to create at a time that was meaningful to me, not necessarily on a schedule. And, and I'll get back to the schedule. I think that to me is something that I like doing. I like having that time to write, to record, to create. But um, obviously, and I've said this, if you've been listening to my podcast, we welcomed um, a new addition to our family. And it's been really amazing to watch her grow so quickly and um, there's been some uh, health issues, but everything's okay. And I just, I just want to enjoy that time with my daughters and, and share this. And that's actually kind of what I want to talk about today is what do I hope for when my own daughters go to school? And the, obviously the academics is something that, you know, it's just kind of a given. But there's some things that are necessary to be put in place before that. And I think for me, the work people ask me or say this to me all the time, you know, when you become a parent, does it change uh, your view of school? And for me, I think because I had uh, kids later in life, I didn't start having kids until my 40s. I think that it, it didn't really change my views, but it made me more adamant about them in many ways. And the things that I want um, for my own daughters is something I've been advocating for, for um, not only students, but for educators as well. And I think now I'm more, you know, I'm I'm more invested in it because of course I want the things I want for all other kids. I want for my daughters and vice versa. And so when, when I talk to parent groups, one of the things that I, or two of the things I talk about all the time is that something that, you know, is necessary um, that we have um, for all of our kids is the first one is parents need to know their kids are safe. They need to feel that, that comfort. And, and I'm, and obviously, you know, we're, I'm not talking just physically, but emotionally, spiritually, mentally safe uh, through this. And I think that sometimes that is misconstrued that 
especially with the the idea of emotionally safe that you know we got to create these spaces where people can't be challenged uh you know people can't there can't be pushback but i don't think that's that's not what i mean by that and i think that when you create spaces um that are safe that's when you can have pushback that's when you can have challenge and i'll give you an example i'm sure everyone can relate to this the the best mentors that i've actually had in my life have pushed me have challenged me and through that i've grown tremendously but those exact same people i know have my back and i know um they value me and that is something that's conveyed over and over again for every one challenge or one criticism, there's, you know, 10, 20, 30, you know, pieces of positive feedback or value. And I think that's something that's necessary. And it's really easy to criticize. And I think this is something that's becoming more apparent in our world than ever. It's really easy to criticize others. But when they don't feel valued, do they listen? Do they care? Do they check out? Do they want to leave those spaces? And in education, if we really want to grow as individuals, if we want to help our students grow, we want to create that space where students are, feel safe being challenged because they know we got them. We, they know uh, we'll be there for them. And I think that's something that's really important to me. But the other thing that I talk about with parents and I think is really important is that, that we provide every opportunity for our kids to be successful in a way that's meaningful to them. And when, and I've talked a lot about success and what that actually means because success to you and success to me can mean totally different things, but both of us can be successful, even though we use totally different measures. And I think that one of the things we have to identify in, in our world is there are so many different pathways to success in our world today, but we can't just focus on uh, a few that we focused on when I was in school, like what doors are opening. And this might sound, you know, kind of sacrilegious, you know, in an education podcast, but my goal is not to get every kid to college or post-secondary. My goal is to help kids find that pathway to success that's meaningful to them. Now, I want to make sure there's those doors are open if they choose to go to college, if they go to university, some jobs, they still require that. But we can't, say that success is only leading to one pathway. And I think that's something we need to recognize as, as both parents and educators. And so the idea of, you know, ensuring our kids are safe is necessary. Uh, ensuring that every kid has the opportunity to be successful in a way that's meaningful to them. And that could look very different for every kid. Those are two things that I, that are very necessary in what we do in education, but specifically speaking about my own daughters and what I hope for them and ultimately what I hope for every kid. I, I think about these three things um, quite often in what we do in education. And so the first one is that when my kids go to sc school, they feel valued. And it, that just isn't in the conversations that we have. That just isn't in the classroom. It's when they walk in to a school, what do they see represented? What do they see in those spaces? And just a quick story. I remember when I first became a principal, I remember specifically seeing pictures when I walked into the school the first day of this new school. I remember seeing the pictures of every single principal that actually was in that school ever, you know, from the, the inception until current day. And I'll tell you, I watched every kid walk into that school. I never saw a kid go, oh, that was a principal in 1972. That's amazing. Like nobody cares. Right. And I find it funny that we say kids are narcissistic because they're posting selfies uh, on Instagram, but we used to post portraits of ourselves on walls. And so it seems kind of ridiculous. And um, I actually talked to my staff about it. I said, I don't, I don't feel comfortable with these pictures of these principles. Um, and, and there is some pushback, right? And, you know, the idea is that that's the way it's always been done you know, tradition. And one of my favorite quotes, and it is not mine, and I laugh every time I think about it, is tradition is peer pressure from dead people. And I know that some traditions are good, but we always have to look at traditions um, that are they actually beneficial to the people in the current moment? And I think that's something that's really necessary. Like, do we give out awards because they're beneficial to kids or because we've always done it, right? 
do we do certain things in our school because they're beneficial to our staff or because we've always done it? And sometimes we just get in this perpetual loop of just doing things and then we forget why we started them in the first place or if they're relevant now. And so when I talked to my staff about those pictures that we had up, there was some pushback at the beginning and I understand because, you know, someone knew going against tradition, but eventually we talked about it and, and what we replaced those pictures with was pictures of current principals, you know, principals or sorry, not, sorry, not principals, but students, students that were in the building at that moment. And it was really amazing to see the difference when kids walked in because they were just freaking out like, Oh, I'm on the wall. And how, how amazing that was to see that excitement from our kids. And so one of the schools I saw that did really well, uh, Jasper Place is actually in Edmonton, Alberta, where I live. The, the students actually decorated the school. And I, wouldn't, I, I don't even want to use that term decorated because they, didn't, they designed it. They designed and, you know, were very thoughtful on uh, pictures of representation of the current students in the school. And, you know, there's, there's, I, there's always a space to, you know, honor, you know, graduates from the past. But I think we get so caught up in that that we don't even honor, as I was talking about earlier, we don't honor the kids in the room, the present. So when we go into those classrooms, when you go into the classroom, is it decorated by the teacher based on what they would like to see up on the walls? Or do you create that time, you know, as you go back to school, many of you think about this, I, I suggest this to people all the time, is that a really great thing to do is to not decorate your classroom when kids come back. And I know that, you know, we might not be back uh, physically in the summer, but thinking about that, why not actually have some materials where kids can decorate the classrooms with you? Not only will it save you a bunch of time in decorating, but now kids will be see themselves in that space and now it becomes our classroom. And so I want my kids to feel that value. And of course it's in the conversations, but when you go back to your schools, when you go back to your spaces, I want you to look and look around the school and see, um, and, and see it with fresh eyes like you've never been there before and see it from the viewpoint of a kid. What do they see? What does it tell them? And if you want really not only to do that, ask the kids, like, do, do we just become numb and ignore the things on the walls or do they become an important piece of the culture we're trying to build within our schools? The second thing that I think, um, or the second thing I know that I really want for my own kids, I want this for every kid is that will, will our schools look for what they can do well and what their strengths are, or will they focus solely on what they can't do? And this is, again, kind of thinking about the, the conversations that we have. We, we often focus on, hey, like, this is wrong. You didn't do this right. Here's where you can improve. Here's this. And that feedback to grow, move forward is necessary. But in the spaces that we have this, uh, when, we, when we teach our kids, we, we, we often become deficit focused and focus on what they can't do. And one of the things that I was told as a kid over and over again is that you talk too much and then I became a speaker in education so maybe that was a strength maybe that was something I was really good at and the the classrooms that actually encouraged me to share my voice for example drama uh, music those classes were ones that I was excited about going to and that was a strength of mine and I know that there's spaces where it's maybe talking all the time is not conducive and I, and I understand that, but even in those spaces, is there an opportunity to actually build on that strength as opposed to see it as a weakness? And I think that what we do in education too often, and this is a trickle down effect. Um, you hear from the media schools are bad at this, right? And then you hear from that goes to the superintendents and then they make an action plan. And then you hear from the principals and then, you know, we, we got to like here, all our plans are focused on what schools are, are weak at or what they need to get better at, but they don't really talk about what we're good at and why and how we can continue to develop that. So when you're looking at my kids and you're looking at other kids, the first conversation we should be having is like, what gets this kid up in the morning? What gets them excited? You know, why are they here? And how do you bring that in? And you can see if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see um, I love basketball, I'm wearing my Raptor shirt. Um, 
you know, I'm a huge music fan. You can see my record player in the background. Could you have used those things, those things I'm interested in, I'm passionate about in school? Could you have tapped into it? And I think you really can. And the more that I see the things I love in my learning, the more excited I'm going to be about my learning. Uh, like I think about, I dropped out of piano very young and I understand you have to learn the basics, but I felt that I was really excited about piano until I had to play music I didn't care about or wasn't interested in listening to. What would have changed if I got to play music I was interested in at that time, or at least known that was somewhere a path that I was going to would have got me more interested in it uh, through that process. And like I said, I understand you have to know the basics and develop that, but where are we, we getting the space to? And so focusing on what kids can do is, is the play. It's not about ignoring weaknesses. It's about starting with strengths. I think that's really necessary in, in what we do in education. And the third and final thing that I think about my own kids is that if they were to miss a day of school, would they feel their contributions were sorely missed? That if they didn't attend, if they weren't there, people would notice and miss them. Say like, oh, I wish, you know, Georgia was here. I wish Kalia was here because she'd have really great insights on this topic. Are they passive consumers or active creators? And I remember reading, um, uh, I think it's Alexis Wiggins, talked about mirroring a student and and or sorry uh shadowing a student for the entire day and going through the process and and the and and the question was asked basically like what what would you feel if you missed a day and, and it's like nobody would even care because like what does it matter and so when you create these spaces where students feel they have to be there because if they're not other people lose out then that makes it such a more compelling place to go. And if you don't believe me, think about it in your work. If, if you feel that if you're doing a staff meeting or professional learning, if, you, if you're in this environment where there are spaces where it is necessary that your voice is heard and your contributions are necessary, you will be more inclined to show up. You'll be more inclined. And, and like I said earlier, not just show up, but to be present to actually be in that space because you know that you're valued through that, through that time. And I, I think this kind of goes to the notion of like great teaching, great leadership. There's a lot of crossover that when you look to great leaders, it's not that they create this massive following, they develop leaders. And I think it's really easy um, in like a social media age where we talk about followers, we say, you know, and we talk about that. But when we think about that, are we empowering people to go out and create their own learning, create their own opportunities? And if you, if you're in a space where people know that their contributions are necessary, they will go out on their own and hopefully continue to do that with others as well and elevate others. And so I think that's really important in the work that we do. So the three things I just mentioned is that, um, will my kids feel valued, right? Will they feel valued? Um, when they walk into school, will they feel welcome through the space? Um, will, will the, the second thing is, will people look at what their strengths are and what their passions and talents are and try to bring that out? Or are we focus solely on, on their weaknesses? And then the last one is, if they missed a day of school, would they feel their contributions were sorely missed out on? And I think if, if you do those three things, like I said, the academics, those things are really important to what we do in education. But if you do those three things, if you focus on those three things, it's gonna be so much easier to really grow as learners. And as I said earlier, this is something I don't only want for my kids, obviously, but I want this for every single kid that goes in school because it will be so much better space. But also, and I think this is really important, all those things I just said are really necessary for our staff and for our learners and do we create that? And I know this is something I try to focus on when I was a principal. Um, and obviously, like, we all need to grow and I could have been way better at it. But I think just putting it at the forefront of these are the things I'm trying to do um, with our students and with their staff. And putting that out there, I think that's the best place to start. You, you're not going to be perfect. We all need to grow. We can all get better at our work. We're, we're not perfect. We never, like, 
focusing on doing great work and is, is sometimes lost in this pursuit of perfection because perfection sometimes uh, stifles us in our work. But when we focus on, Hey, these are the things that we're setting out to do. And, you know, I might not do it all the time, but I'm going to keep this, you know, in the forefront, the work we do will, will be so much better. So I want you to kind of think about those three things and, and how will you create that for um, our students and for our colleagues? Because I don't like if, if, if you're listening to this and you're a teacher and you're thinking, yeah, my principal should do this. I think maybe you should think, how could I do that for my principal? How could I do that for my, my, my colleagues across the hall? Because if you're, you're depending upon one person at the top to do this, uh, then, then we could be waiting for a long time. But if we all take an onus on this on how we create this for our students, for one another, how much better could school be? Anyways, thanks for taking the time to listen. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you're having uh, a great break and I hope you can be present um, with those people that are closest to you and, and in the moment you have right now. Take care.